My next guest was the fat kid at school. He grew up with a mother who cooked delicious Italian food, which was served up in huge portions. Uh, by the age of nine, he, he was used to being the bullied, overweight kid in the class, called names like bowling ball and alienated from other children at the same time. His turning point came only three years ago, and he's since lost half his body weight. True story. Uh, but as we're about to find out, that's not the only thing he lost. And cakes weren't the only thing he had to give up. Silvestro Musumeci joins me in the studio right now. Good afternoon, Silvestro. Good afternoon, Chris. Uh, just three years ago, you weighed, and listeners should understand this, 144 kilograms. <laughs> what do you weigh now? Um, as of this morning, 75. And to all those who bullied you endlessly at school, who may be listening, who know you very well, what would you like to say that, to them now? Well, if I can do it, you can do it. Is that it? Well... I thought you are going to get rather nasty. No. All that cruelty. No, I think there's no need to be nasty. And I think as kids, uh, we tend to um, not think what we, what, what we say. So um, Forgive and forget. Forgive and forget okay. and time to move forward. All right. You were 13 when you went on your first diet. What was that? You starved yourself? Starved myself, yes. Um, I suppose back then there wasn't as much information. Um, and I thought, well, if I can skip um, breakfast and, and lunch and morning tea and, and starve myself, um, I thought, well, there was no food in my stomach, that, therefore I would lose weight. And you got sick? Sick, yes, absolutely. Hmm. Sick. So it um, wasn't the, uh, I was tired, I was weak, I was angry. Um, so it wasn't the, uh, the smart way of, of losing weight. Okay, I know what listeners are thinking now. What is the turning point? What is the motivational point? Uh, your basic moment of truth when you knew there was no turning back and it came just three years ago when you saw yourself. Is that right? That's correct. There was a family function in Easter 2003. Uh, my young brother John um, took a video of the... Um, dinner and talking, walking around, and then we sat down afterwards and watched the actual um, video, and um, not until you see yourself in a three-dimensional way, when you see yourself walking away from yourself, and you see your big neck and the skin sitting there, and you, you think, I felt really ashamed and embarrassed about myself, how I managed to get myself that big, and... Um, and, I'll, I mean, that's how people see me. And because I'll, you don't look in the mirror if you don't think you're good looking, do you? No. I'm, you don't view <laughs> away from mirrors. So you never see yourself until maybe, as you did, you see a video. That's right. And that was basically my moment of truth where, um, like I said, I was quite ashamed of myself. And, you know, I had to um, be, be honest and, and take responsibility for what I've done to my body. How did you do that? What was the first step? First step. Um, it would have been Tuesday after um, Easter Monday. I walked straight into a gym. Um, that was probably the best place I thought to go. Did they laugh at you? Um, no, the first question they asked me was, um, why do you want to lose weight? <laughs> and the answer I gave is to look and feel good again and to be accepted by others. Um, not to lose weight and to run the marathon um, or to fit into, into tight jeans. It was basically, I just wanted to be accepted back into the community as a normal person. Uh, the amazing thing about what you have written in your book, If I Can, You Can, How I Lost Half My Body Weight, is how life changed for you, and in particular how people reacted to you completely differently when you started losing weight. Tell us about that. Um, as I was losing weight, um, people would um, you know, come up to me and say, look fantastic, you look great. And, um, and that would obviously boost my confidence and my self-esteem. Um, some people out there never thought that I would achieve what I have achieved. And, um, and they're quite surprised. But as I was losing weight, people would not recognize me. My, my way of thinking changed. Um, you now the food I ate was different. The clothes I bought were different. Um, How did your wife react to all of this? The the attention was now on you. The, you were heading off to the gym. Uh, she kind of freaked out a little bit, did you? Absolutely. Um, I mean, I've never had this attention before. So after 23 years of being overweight from the age of nine to 32, um, I didn't not too sure how to take attention. Um, were these people for real or were they just taking, I suppose, the terminology, the, the mickey out of me? I wasn't quite sure. Um, and what did your I, wife think was happening? 
Well, my wife um, obviously felt left out because I wasn't at home as often because I was at the gym. Uh, there was times where I didn't encourage my wife to come along, um, but unfortunately that has um, came down to a um, recently a um, not a very good ending. But um, unfortunately, how do you mean? How do you mean? Well, uh, we've recently separated, um, so I think one of the sacrifices that I've come across through my weight loss is I have lost my wife. Um, I don't blame my wife whatsoever, I mean, because um, they don't change, we change. And, um, and I changed. Um, my way of thinking, um, the way I... I um, you I weren't look. the husband she once had. No, well, we married in 1995, and I was 144 kilos, and... Um, and and obviously that was a person she, she fell in love with. That's a big tuxedo. Yeah, it's a big tuxedo. <laughs> I actually, I still have the tuxedo, so if anybody That's out it. there wants to buy an ex tuxedo, but um, it is yeah. for sale. You might but have to um, see Taronga Zoo and talk to the <laughs> elephants. Uh, yeah. So she, so you were what becoming selfish? You were dedicated um, to lose weight far more than worrying about your marriage. I you can say that. Um, I suppose it was a. T I had to really have some time for myself and that might self s sound selfish but if I didn't start to lose weight if I didn't start to take control of my life um, I would have been probably dead in two or three years. You gave it far greater priority than you gave your wife didn't you? That's right oh. that's right and I've paid that ultimate part price now. When you lose half your body weight there's a lot of skin that's been stretched that's sitting on your body what did you do about that? Um, I watched, I mean, I keep on watching those, um, shows on TV and one show was Body Works and, um, there's a surgeon on there called Dr. Jeremy Hunt. So I took his name down and, um, I decided to call him after I lost most of my body weight and I've had, I had a lower bottom lift, which was showed on, on, t on TV, uh, where they basically cut me right around 360 degrees and remove three to four kilos of skin, and 500 stitches, and seven days later in hospital, I was in, and three months of recovery. I, I get a feeling, though, <laughs> from the way you're describing this, and from, I've got to say, the way you look, you look terrific. Thank you. You don't regret any of that, do you? No, I don't. Uh, interesting. I've just got an email sent to us from a Rebecca. Having travelled much the same road as Silvestro, I was 110 kilos two years ago, and to date have shed 40 kilos... It's great to hear someone else's story. Um, and she says, I knew I should have written a book about it, <laughs> which is great. Uh, just quickly, the weight loss programs, like Biggest Loser, are these good? Um, or... They're good to a point where they um, probably initiate, initiate um, a light bulb, I suppose, where people all of a sudden look at themselves and look at these people and, and think that I better start losing weight. So they... Initially, you might encourage people, inspire them, start losing weight. However, um, to lose that amount of weight in that given time is not the real thing. Uh -huh. um, it's basically a lifestyle change, not just a three months. No. The word diet basically is where you deprive yourself. And you can't deprive yourself because you'll go back there and you'll have twice the amount, yeah. which I have spoken about in my book. Yeah. If you've I got to change your life completely. You've got to yeah. change your life completely and forever, right? Forever. Yeah. And you've got to want to do it. Okay, let's leave it there. Um, I appreciate your time coming in here. And uh, if I can, you can. How I Lost Half My Body Weight is going to go gangbusters, mate, because so many of us, maybe not in the 144 kilogram bracket, <laughs> no. but certainly in a bracket we don't, don't want to be. And uh, look, just looking at the before pictures, I cannot believe this is so yeah, I mean, Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the book. I'm really happy that ultimately the reason why I wrote this book is to really share my experiences with others. Mm. And, and help them if they're in the beginning, the middle, or towards the end of their journey, they can pick this book up and they can certainly be inspired to take control. And I mean, then if I can do it, there's no reason why you can't do it because I'm an average guy in an average suburb and um, I, I speak from the heart. It's dynamite inspiration, I can tell you that, but it comes as a price, as Silvestro's story uh, includes. Thank you so much for coming in. Well Thank done. You. Thank you for having me, Chris. Okay, Silvestro. Uh, Mizumechi, uh, one hell of a story, and if you look at him now, you wouldn't have ever thought he would have been overweight, let alone 144 kilograms. And the before and after photos are just extraordinary.